Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Not really sure how rare and exotic the Yochi Japanese single malt is. Whiskey base 231080, 45%. Over here in Germany, we're paying anywhere between 65 and 70 euros for this whiskey. Now, during the um, Christmas break, between Christmas and New Year, I read the Japanese um, malt yearbook, which was very enlightening. Now, many of you know from Aquavite, from Roy, the malt whiskey yearbook for Scotland. Now, for the last two years, there's been a Japanese whiskey yearbook. It's written in Japanese, it's translated in English. I have the Kindle version, and I'm going to let us just hear some of the interesting facts, figures, and so on about the distillery Yochi. All right, so um, we're going to just move this over here and start talking a little bit about what's going on at that place. So, um, we have one of the older distilleries in Japan. So we have to start off with a person that we might all know a tiny little bit here. This person is called the godfather here of Japanese whiskey. And we have um, Mazazaka, Mazataka, sorry, Mazataka Takasuru. All right, he went over to Scotland, learned all about Scottish distilling um 19 when was it 14 16 around that area he was sent there by his boss with a 10-year contract came back to japan found the perfect location for making whiskey which is the city basically um hokkaido yochi and his boss basically said no <laughs> and so they he the boss built then um with zontori bought and built the uh, Yamazaki distillery, the first distillery in Japan for whiskey. All right, so Mazataka Takasuru worked for 10 years for his boss until his contract was up and said, all right, good, I'm going to make my own whiskey distillery up at the place where I actually saw as the best place. Very similar um, weather conditions like in Scotland where he did his apprenticeship, where he, he met a Scottish girl, brought her back to Japan, became the godfather of, of, um, of Japanese whiskey and built his distillery there in Yochi. Um, mountains on three sides, one of the biggest um, herring fishing ports of Japan, just like Vic, where Opotni is made, is one of the biggest fishing ports of um, herring ports of Scotland. And um, he actually built his distillery there. So it was built 1934. They started producing whiskey here um, 1938. So um, Mazataka. Takasuru was in Scotland 1918, so during World War I. Now, um, what we have here is the beginning of an interesting company called Nika. Nika is originally sp spelled and pronounced Dai Nippon Kayu Company, translated to the Great Japan Juice Company. Why? Because at the beginning, there was no cash flow. Where did the cash flow come? From apple juice. In Yochi is the first area in Japan that actually uh, were able to plant and harvest from apple trees apples and make apple juice out of it. And so we have Nippon, Japan, Ni, and we have Kaju, juice, Nika, Japanese juice. <laughs> and so, which is really funny that we say, oh, the juice in the bottle. I like that. So he started off with a single pot still um, with whiskey production back here in um, 1936. The first ever Nikka whiskey was then produced 1940, six years after the distillery came online. And during the next 90 years, the distillery, especially um, Nikka as a company, tried to retain the protected dreams of um, Masataka Takasuru's hopes and desires for what whiskey in Japan should be like. Now, 
he was at um, the distilleries in Longmorn, and he was at the distilleries in um, Hazelburn in Campbelltown. Uh, I'm reading still the book called Whiskey and Pete. Beautiful, beautiful book. And even last night I was talking at a whiskey. I gave a whiskey tasting at a distillery. And there we talked a little bit about the history of heating stills. Now, um, 150 to 180 years ago, many, many, many of the pot, of the pot stills in Scotland were peat-fired pot stills. Only about 120 years ago, around 1900, 1880, 1920, um, with the rise of the Industrial Revolution, maybe even 20 years earlier, we started using coal. Coal has four to six, maybe even eight times more energy than a typical ton of peat. It was cheaper, gave more energy, most of the places switched. Then around the 1950s, 1960s, almost no one uses coal in Scotland anymore. No one. Everyone switched 50s, 60s, up until the 80s were the last, I think. They all switched due to price and also due to environment. Today, as we would say that, um, usually price, to oil or gas, natural gas. And now we're in the middle of a process again where we change the heating um, to more regenerative, re regenerative to re regenerate, um, so clean, green energies, wind, solar, electricity, biomass, biofuels, and, and uh, thermal energy, geothermal energy, and so on. So we have more and more distilleries that are switching again the heat that is needed to produce their whiskeys. So we went from peat in Scotland, let's say 200 years ago, um, to coal 130 years ago, to about 50 years ago, we went to um, oil and um, gas, natural gas, and today we are going over to our green energy sources. Four different things, all right? So now in Japan, at this company, Yoichi, they stuck even today still with their wash stills that are coal fire direct heat stills which is unheard of in Scotland or any place else in the world that I know. We're talking about temperatures between 800 and 1200 degrees Celsius that happens here because of the coal burning. Coal is very, very hot and direct fire is very even hotter. So um, it takes, it's said it takes almost 10 years to actually become an expert in mastering the, 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 the stoking of the coal fires. All right, um, so their wash stills, coal, direct fire, their spirit stills, indirect steam fire. Yay. All right, so at Yoichi, we take um, six tons of malted barley. We take soft water that comes from the Yoichi River. And the barley is usually your laureate. Um, comes from Scotland, comes from England, and comes from Australia. And there's so many different types of barley used. Some of it is non-peated, some of it is lightly peated, anywhere 4 to 15, and some of it is heavily peated for all the way up to 20, up to 50 ppm, wherever they can get that, all right? So everything is milled on a Swiss Bula malt mill, and then it's put into a stainless steel semi louter ton, 50,000 liters in size. So after we do the, the sacrification, so the, the, the bolt ton, the, we, we put that in the water, we're left with about 25,000 liters of wort. So the wort is pulled off and it is then put into 10 different washbacks. So we have one big washback with 40,000 liters and we have the remaining nine are between 24 and 28 liters. Those, um, that wash is then, after it's fermented, distilled in the direct coal fire pot stills for about five to six hours. This, the spirit stills, <coughs> there's one that's 14,000 liters and the other um, 11,000. They use steam coils for indirect heat. And once again, the shapes here, just like with the wash stills, are very straight. The line arms go down. That means that as soon as the alcohol molecule goes up, goes over the line arm, that's it. And both of them have um, our warm tub condensers, the wash stills and the spirit stills. 
Now, the Spirit Run, Spirit Run takes about 12 hours, which is fairly long. All right, the new um, make is um, put in the cask anywhere between 63 and 65% ABV. And Yochi uses um, bourbon casks, sherry cask, and even virgin oak casks. All right, so um, what else can I say here? 27 different warehouses for Yochi. They include a multi-story rack-style warehouse that opened up in 2022. Um, 7,000 casks can be stored there, and most of the other warehouses are dunnage style. Three high, a clay floor, very, very good. Um, if you find black Nika, if you find super Nika, if you find Nika from the barrel, this will have whiskey in it that's not from Japan. It does not conform to the new regulations of Japanese whiskey. This does. If you um, want to have a grain whiskey from Nika, you go to the Chita. Also made in Japan, very, very nice. And if you want to be hip and modern, um, you have Nika Days, 40%. Um, the bottle is kind of cool. Uh, look, everything's yellow. If there's not some type of artificial coloring in here, I'm going to eat a straw hat. All right, very good. So what am I going to compare this to? I'm going to compare it to ta -da, the other interesting distillery that was founded in the year that I was born, 1969. The Miyagichu, probably not saying it perfectly right, but that's okay. We have the Yochi, and then we have the um, Miyagichu uh, distilleries here, also 45%. This is more of a floral moment. This has more of a peaty, smoky moment, all right? So um, this I should like more. Let's see. Both of these run anywhere between 65 and 70 euros over here in Germany at the moment. Seven years ago, so basically um, 2017, Nika stopped all age statement products. Last year, for the very, very first time, um, there was the 10-year Yochi. It's the first time in seven years that Nika has released anything aged. And I think it's a Japanese exclusive. Now, what I thought is also interesting, many of the buildings here on site are um, now since 2022 listed so there are important cultural properties by the japanese government and what is really really interesting is um, nine times a day if you go to uh, yochi to the distillery there will be tours for free a free tasting a free tour interesting all right, and there's actually a Nika museum that you can go visit um, that is um, possible to visit without actually going on the tour. Good. Let's review the whiskey after giving all this history here about Japanese whiskeys. The Japanese whiskey um, yearbook 2023 is something I can highly recommend. I have it as a Kindle, as... Um, and I've read it, and I go back to it, and most of the information I got here was from them. Um, yeah. Do I want to have age statements again? Yes. Do I, do I want to pay for Japanese whiskey 300 plus euros for those age statements? No. Will I have to pay 300 plus euros, 200 plus euros in the future? Probably. So am I happy with this at the moment for 60, 65, 70 euros? Yes. All right. On the nose. Floral, with a tad bit, as a kid, we're talking 40 years ago, we had actually in one of the houses we lived in, a coal furnace. So I remember having the coal truck come, we'd shovel everything down in the basement, and every five times, eight times a day, we'd have to go and put new coal down in the coal furnace. That was a pain in the butt. We have no idea how good life is with central heating. You just turn the thermostat and everything works. <laughs> If you ever had a wood stove and just had to put wood in it all day long as well, you had to chop the wood, you had to chop down the trees, you know what a pain in the butt it is. But that's why I get a little bit of a tiny little bit of a dusting of like coal powder on here. But usually Japanese whiskeys, and this is no exception, very rounded, very, very perfected whiskeys. Much more of a floral moment, much fruitier. Miyagichu. I do have some tasting notes here. It says something about this. 
full flavored, rich, initially concentrated. It's um, notes hint at the extreme intensity of the nose. It then develops ar um, aromas of malted barley, exotic fruits, maybe banana, licorice, and campor. Notes of burnt wood and ash progressively settle over the aromatic palate long after white flowers and beeswax make an appearance. I don't get any real ash here. Over here, just to talk about the difference, we have full-bodied smooth, a mellow peat softly coats the aromatic palate at first, growing more powerful with time as smoke, soot, and salty notes transcend the initial nose. The, aroma, the aromas then evoke towards candied citrus, fruit, lemons, orange, black licorice, and spices, nutmeg, ginger, and opens up with roots and dried twig aromas. Heady and floral, carnation, iris, it grows increasingly complex. I like this better on the nose. All right, so let's try. Cheers. Oh, sorry. Kampai. Kampai. <laughs> that is an amazingly well crafted whiskey. We sometimes talk about a blended product. Now, everything that's not a single cast is blended. That means I can take from one distillery. If we have 20,000 casks, any of those casks from that distillery, I can put into this bottle and create something. And I think they took just a few casks of mid-sized peated whiskey. It's not the smoke chamber. It's not the, um, the, um, the heather of Highland Park. It's like a Isla Peat. It's like Port Ellen peated, but just a bad, tad bit. It's almost as if I took, let's say, a Glen Morangi 10 or a Glen Cadam 10 and put in 10% Lagovuli. And that's what this is. This is a perfectly crafted, molded whiskey. From the beginning, floral, nice. In the middle, a little bit of the peat joins, dissipates a tiny little bit, and I have the maltiness towards the end. This is a masterpiece. This is very, very good. Um, this is a, in my book, even though it has peat in it, and I'm not a peat head, we're going to go for a B minus. I really, really like it. Wow. So, the palate, firm, powerful, well-balanced attack gives equal footing to aromas of peat, smoke, spice, fresh fruit, lemon, kiwi, and nuts, almonds, walnut, which it delivers in spades. The mid-palate Starts off with chocolate notes. Did not get that. But the peat soon stakes, takes the lead once again. And the finish is long, silk. I still have it. Extremely mature. It overflows with ripe fruit, pears, mirabella, um, plum, apple. The peat starts taking on a herbaceous and malty character. While I get a tiny little bit of salt. While the salty flavors give the Finish plenty of depth and coastal freshness. The final nose offers menthol, spice, coriander, dill, and earthy leather chestnuts notes. That's a good whiskey. I would love to have had an old, um, or even the Yochi 10. If I could get that for 110 euros, I would buy it. All right, so <laughs> challenge accepted, Jason, right? Going over here to this. Miyagichu. So, um, if you do not know Kampai Planet yet, um, please go and watch him. Um, that's Kampai Planet. Very, very, very good guy. He's doing great things there. Um, Mac is his name. Mm. Wonderful. All right. He lives in Japan. He speaks Japanese and he is an expert in Japanese spirits. 
as I said on the nose, much more honey, much more sweetness, much more fruitiness and floralness. Kampai. This feels much younger. There's more of an alcoholic bite. Both are 45%. It does have a certain thickness, and I do get a little bit of the, it's more of a smokiness rather than peatiness. Here I get peat. Here I get a little bit of a smokiness. Um, much better. Good? Much better, in my opinion. Wow, that surprised me. I thought I would like this as well. So it says here on the palate, firm, lively, malted barley is at the heart of the palate, coated in herbaceous licorice and spiced Ginger, cinnamon, and chocolate tones. Very elegant. The mid palate also delivers plenty of energy. Marketing flannel. Um, as it draws to a close, fresh tobacco leaves and coconut intertwine to create a mutual symphony of aromas. I do not get coconut. So the finish is long, soft. It evokes a scent of, um, of wilted roses. Wow, they wrote down wilted roses. <laughs> All right, uh, fine tannins balance its tangy character, lemon and grapefruit. Yeah, I get more of a of a tanginess, a little bit of a sourness here. Lingers on um, notes of tobacco, spices, cardamom, ginger, toasted fruit, nuts, stewed fruits, maybe apples, and also here a damson, D A M S O N. And the final note um, reveals exotic notes of maybe lychee. Lychee. Um, wow. This surprises me how well I like it. One last little sip here. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite Japanese whiskey at the moment? Um, do you have a Japanese whiskey you like at the moment? Um, <laughs> I know it's not important, but this is just like, wait, I really like this box. I just did a video a day ago or so about Eden Mill. I hated their boxes. This is a sturdy, nice little cardboard box. And it's like, wait a second, I can put a finger in here. What's going on? And I peeled this away. This is just a standard box. And they just wrap this blue little paper around it and just glue it here. Or they have exactly the same thing. They just wrap this, I'm going to call it live purple. Sorry, I'm a man. I only have 16 colors in my uh, color spectrum. Um, and they just glue it on there. And it has a certain stability and a certain amount of style and simplicity as well. I like the bottles. I, I Japanese whiskey, screw cap as always, which I expect now and I like. It will never go bad. You'll never have a cork break on you. I have no problem whatsoever with Japanese whiskey doing the corks there. And I really, really, really think um, Nika's doing a great job. Santori, um, Beam Santori also. But Nika has a special place in my heart. So what is your favorite Japanese whiskey? Write it down in the comments. Hope to see you real soon. I hope you learned a little bit about history of Japanese whiskey as well as from Yochi. As well as our Miyagichu. See you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.